Abruptio placenta or placental abruption is the premature separation of the placenta from the uterine wall, either partially or completely. The incidence is approximately 1% of all pregnancies. There are many different risk factors for placental abruption. Some are more important than others, and we will list the primary ones. Number one is maternal hypertension, which is most likely the most common risk factor of all and a rather common uh, problem in pregnancies. Number two is cocaine use. Number three is prior abruptio placentae. Four, cigarette smoking, usually chronic. Multiple gestation. Polyhydramnius, or increased amount of amniotic fluid volume. Premature rupture of the membranes. And trauma, maternal trauma. And as you might suspect, some women have a combination of uh, these factors. Uh, one of the ones that also is, is uh, of utmost importance is the pre previous uh, abruptio placenta. The diagnosis of uh, placental abruption is essentially clinical, as there are no specific or reliable tests that establish this diagnosis. Vaginal bleeding and or uterine tenderness uh, certainly suggest the possibility of placental abruption in any, any uh, pregnancy. Ultrasound can be used to aid in the diagnosis of abruptio placentae. It is, help in visual, it is helpful in visualizing a retroplacental or subchorionic clot, but in many cases, ultrasound does not help in confirmation. Hemorrhage occurring with an abruption may go into several different locations, and this is important because most of the time there is more bleeding associated with this condition than meets the eye. Most of the va vaginal bleeding is seen, but occasionally concealed abruption uh, occurs which shows no evidence of external bleeding. There may be retroplacental clots, hemorrhage into the amniotic cavity, blood between the amnion and chorion, blood passing through the fallopian tubes resulting in hemoperitoneum and blood extravasation among the myometrial muscles fibers that may cause a bluish mottled appearance to the uterus called a cuvillar uterus. If one visualizes this at the time of cesarean section, usually the placenta, the uh, uterus may have some evidence of acne, but uterotonic agents 
uh, usually take care of this of this problem, so cesarean hysterectomy is not uh, indicated. The consequences of abruptio placentae may include uh, several different processes. Number one is DIC or disseminated intervascular coagulation. Number two is maternal mortality. Three, renal failure. Four, Sheehan's syndrome, which is pituitary ischemia resulting in infarction and uh, can be a cause of diabetes, hypothyroidism, loss of uh, ability to ovulate, and uh, loss of menstrual periods. And the fifth is fetal mortality. Next, we turn to the management of uh, abruptio placentae. If, placent if placental abruption is suspected, then certain lab values are necessary. A CBC should be drawn type and cross for packed red blood cells, and certain clotting studies as DIC uh, can be a serious complication of this. These would include plasma fibrinogen, APTT, PT, and fibrin split product. In addition, a quick clotting study can be done by the bedside called the poor man's clotting test. This comprises obtaining a red stoppered tube of blood, that is kept by the clinician. And every minute or so, the tube is rotated to observe if a clot has developed. If no clot is observed in six to eight minutes, DIC is diagnosed. Usually a plasma fibrinogen of less than 150 is present. Otherwise, if this clotting, uh, poor man's clotting test is not utilized, laboratory results, especially a low plasma fibrinogen, and low platelet count diagnosed DIC. Disseminated intervascular coagulation in abruptio placentae occurs secondary to entrance of placental tissue thromboplastin into the maternal circulation, which activates the external coagulation pathway, thus depleting clotting factors. If DIC is diagnosed, then packed red blood cells, and fresh frozen plasma with platelet transfusions are often required. In the event of intrauterine fetal demise, secondary to an abruption, it is prudent to initiate packed red blood cell and fresh frozen plasma transfusions as soon as possible because up to 30 to 50 percent of more or more of the, of the time uh, disseminated intervascular like intravascular, disseminated vasculitis will occur with fetal death in utero. External fetal monitoring should be initiated as soon as abruptio placenta is suspected if the pregnancy is thought to be a viable gestation. Late decelerations of the fetal heart rate with decreased variability may occur with decreased utero placental perfusion. Cesarean so section is often chosen for delivery unless vaginal delivery is, is anticipated very soon due to uterine contractions and a rapidly dilating cervix. Artificial rupture of the membranes is a reasonable option if placental previa has been ruled out with ultrasound. 
Intravenous oxytocin is permissible. The fetal heart rate is reassuring, especially while awaiting laboratory results. Urinary output in an individual without renal disease is a reasonable estimate of plasma volume. A Foley catheter should be inserted and hourly urinary outputs recorded. In patients with abruptio placentae, especially in severe cases, underperfusion of the kidneys may occur due to decreased plasma volume, resulting in oliguria or anuria. Fresh frozen plasma and packed red blood cells should be given even if the patient's vital signs and hemoglobin are within normal range and the urinary output does not respond to usual IV therapy. In patients with partial abruption in preterm gestations, Conservative care <clears throat> with close monitoring of maternal and fetal status and serial appropriate lab tests may be appropriate. In conclusion, early diagnosis with treatment of DIC, if present, and timely delivery, often by cesarean section, will result in improved outcome for mother and neonate.